fortunate uh, to come away with the win. Um, I didn't think we played great. Uh, St. Joe's, I thought, did some very good stuff, and um, we're happy to come away with the win. I think um, the will to win at the end was nice, though. I think when you're going to try to do something special, you got to win some games where things don't go perfect. You get out rebounded. Um, you shoot very poor, I thought, from the three point line. Um, and so we're going to have to move on and, uh, you know, continue to improve. I think, uh, you know, Caddy's got a little more in the tank and, and Samson and a couple of the other guys. Um, it's not, I'm not talking about them, uh, you know, just said, hey, you guys can play a little better. So it's one of those things. Max, you had stripped Beverly in the first half for a dunk. Was there something about the way he was dribbling? You had it timed up pretty good? Uh, it was initially. I think he's not even up. Uh, oh, you the first in the first half? half. Yeah. Well, well, you got memory in the uh, in the second. Yeah, game. I mean they did the same thing. They was just like walking with the player with the ball. I started like going by me. I mean it was kind of working for them. You just going like by me, but you play with the ball. Did your eyes get Did your eyes get wide when you realized you could you could uh, you could get um, that steal and go for the dunk? Yeah, yeah, I seen what he was doing. Yeah, can you talk about the strategy that went into denying Langston and Galloway the ball in those last couple of possessions? Chaz was. It was all over and keeping him, and he ended up. You know, if you watched uh, us over the, the years, and especially this year, like at the end of the games, um, you know, Chaz really does a great job of getting on the best guard on the other team and making it hard for him. I mean, I think that's the th third or fourth time he's, he's kind of locked in. Um, and, you know, we figured they were going to Galloway the way he played uh, down the stretch, and we put Chaz on him, uh, let Trey bother the kid Wilson, um, and the rest of the guys do their thing. So we just got to, you know, I think we could do that for more minutes within a game of really turning up the heat the way we did in the last say three or four minutes and, and that's the goal um, and, and so we're gonna uh, we're gonna try to make it make it happen a little bit more often Jess, what was going through your mind when when you were you know you know had to shut him down in this last it's a challenge uh, I love challenges um, I just want to guard the best player on the other team in the game it don't matter whatever coach want me to do I just want to do it to make the team win and uh Coach put me on him and gave me that assignment that late in the game, and I didn't want to let him down, so I did my best. Derek, is that situation of forcing an awkward shot with pop-up and then having Trey, one of the best free throw shooters, on the other end come up with the, the, the rebound? Is no, that, that, that was nice that we came up with a 50-50 ball at that juncture, which uh, is a testament to Trey that he went to the line and made four, came up with a 50-50 <coughs> ball. And I thought getting him and Maxie in the game at a, at a certain juncture, I, think, I forget how much time was left, was – was kind of the, the key to, to flipping it a little bit. Um, gave us another shooter and a, and a guy who was playing with great energy. Um, I thought those two guys, within the context of the team, helped, helped us win the game. Well, you, you talked about kind of seizing the win. Was Maxi Steele on, on there? Is that almost the, the embodiment of, of, of what happened in the game? Well, at this point, you know, nobody's going to give you a game anymore. <laughs> you know, we're not going to be given anything, so we have to go win the game. We have to try to take the game. And uh, I thought Maxi's play epitomized of you know, figure it out. It's not going to be beautiful and perfect. Let's figure it out and, and take the win. There's that when you and Scott were a bit before what happened at the end. Uh, for those of us old, old enough to remember Jimmy Brown, when he used to get up from a, a pile, he looked like he was dead. Well, Chaz was pretty much, you know, on his last legs, and all of a sudden he's the roadrunner again. So that, that he's faking the, uh, <laughs> the entire. You know, he's like a hit in the hip. Remember yeah, he, he got knocked to the floor, and, and, and I don't think they made the call, which at times fires him up. Um, and I, and I, I figured at that point, you know, whether you win or lose the game, he's going to make a run. I mean, he's going to make some plays because you can't do that to Chad. You can't so you knock were, him down. You weren't buying the... No. Uh, if I was buying, he was staying in, so it didn't matter. Trey, <laughs> <laughs> you, you wanted the, did you, you want the ball for the free throws at the end of a game like that? Yeah. Uh, you know, that's, man, my team always give me the ball. I'll try to give me the ball at the end. Yeah. Confident in the uh, making free throws. So that's all. For, for, um, for you, you had made the... the uh, Freezes, but was was maybe your biggest play in the game diving on that loose ball to get you guys the uh, the possession back? Yeah, uh, I was really lacking the first half, so I just wanted to make sure we could close the game. And then Max went in, he, uh, I told him we got six minutes, and he tapped me on my head like it's turned up. Derek, is his poise? Is is his, is Trey's poise late in the game something that you you've come to 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 trust? Oh, absolutely. Um, you know, especially with him going to the free throw line, yeah, he's probably the Maybe our number one guy at the end of the game that I went out there. Um, and I really like him and Chaz being out there together because you have two handlers now. You know, he's, a, he's probably our best three-point shooter, um, even though it's you know, a little funny looking. He, he's probably our best three-point shooter as far as a guy I feel comfortable with knocking it down. So those two at the end of the game, because they can free-throw shoot both handle and, 
uh, make shots, uh, I think, is, is key for us. Chester, you could talk about what Maxi has meant off the bench to this team and then specifically comment about the lift that that fight gave the team tonight. Oh, God. <clears throat> I mean, at first, uh, it's pretty funny because last year it was hard for him, for him to like kind of accept the role. He was so anxious to be a starter. And we had long talks, uh, that being my roommate. And, you know, he accepted the role as being, you know, the energy guy and coming in, in, in the game and give us huge minutes. And, you know, that's what he did tonight. And he knows when, when the game is down and the team is lacking energy, it's up to him to bring it. And, you know, he did that tonight. And, it's pretty funny because I spoke to him about the game. Uh, I spoke to him before the game about playing one-on-one. -on -one. Me and him play one-on-one -on -one a lot. So I tell him, like, if you could check me, you could check anybody on the floor. And, you know, when he got that still, I just knew it was something he could do. Because I don't want to tell you guys, but he picked me the other day in practice. But, you know, I mean, something similar. So I, I understand. And, you know, that's just Maxi being Maxi. Maxi, if you can get guard Chaz in those situations, can you guard just about anybody? I would say something yes. else. <laughs> Derek, you talk about the will, but how important was it they go up nine and Chaz hits those two threes to kind of give you that energy at that huge, point? Huge, huge. I mean, those are the plays we've come accustomed to. And, uh, you know, from a, a guy who's, uh, I think, the best player in our conference, uh, you know, you, he's at times he puts our team on his back and makes huge plays, and he did that again tonight. It's, it wasn't surprising for me. I would, I'm sitting there like, these are going in. Actually, when he misses those, I'm surprised. And, you know, I was a little surprised at a few of our runs today. We didn't knock those sh those shots down. No, we were fortunate that he made those uh, and got us on that run. And then we were able to set up our press. The crowd got into it, so it was kind of a, uh, you know, the, everything fell into place. Yeah, yes. How uh, three games in a row where you it hasn't been pretty, but it's but but it's been win, but you've gotten wins out of them all. How does that? How how do you view that going forward? Well, I view it as it's going to be a. It's probably not going to be pretty as much as we'd like it to be this year. Teams now are, I mean, you can feel it, they're coming in. I mean, it's, so we gotta, you're pretty good when you can, uh, you can withstand those, those, you know, teams coming in and, you know, they're, they're really doing a good job of uh, game planning for us. You know, we're doing the same thing, but they're really, they're really locked in. I think they're guys, when you play a top 25 team, they buy into anything you say, I mean, all the time. And so we gotta, we gotta continue to buy into uh, what we do and, um, you know, hopefully we, we put it together with making some shots and coming up with all the loose balls that I think we can. Josh, do you feel, you feel the target on your back now a little bit more because of that? Definitely. Um, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be a cakewalk. But at the same time, we're still hungry as, as a team in the whole. So, you know, a lot of people are, you know, putting the targets on us, but we still have targets on everybody else because we're still trying to get to the top. So, you know, it's just getting better every day and just keep fighting. Derek. Kenneth Savage was pretty instrumental during that second half run when they went 22-5. Given all the different things he did, is he this kind of guy that gets under your skin a little bit with how he shows up all over the, all over the court? Well, yeah, I think he gets up for us because he, he said he used to do that stuff to Chaz uh, back at Oscar, so he wanted to re redo it now. He, um, he's a really good player. I mean, when he's on his game and, like, I think locked in, he's as good as any guy in our league. I um, mean, he came ready to play tonight. And, yeah, he gets under your skin because he does – He's very good, and he's got the tricks. You know, he's got all the up and unders. The you know, your shoes untied, grab your shorts. He's a he's an old school, very good player. Um, one day you'd like to have on your team, but uh, he's tough to play against. Is that an example of like you said how teams in the conference are going to are going to try to get up and, and bring their best every single time you're going to be seeing those kind of guys rising up? Over yeah, and he's had some games like that. I mean, you know, he played really well against Drexel and some teams like that where he dominated the game. And, I thought for them, uh, he, he did a good job of dominating uh, in his particular way uh, this evening. So yeah, teams are going to be ready. We got to, we have to step our game up one more level and one more notch. And um, everybody has to play their stat line and their minutes uh, the way they're supposed to. We, we can't afford to not have everybody on our team ready to go all the time. Chaz, did you and Halil have any interactions out there? Thought any talk about old times in Hempstead? Uh, no, nah, he actually called me uh, a couple days ago, but I hung up on him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I had to call him back because that's like a brother to me, so I didn't want to be rude, but I told him I'd talk to you after the game. But, you know, he's just a great player, once again, like Coach had it. So, you know, he just wish he would have came here with me, but he didn't. You didn't tell me he was late. No. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Derek, you front-loaded your schedule with all these quality opponents. But what is it about an A-10 opener that... Comes out like that. I mean, I, we, you know, we've played all those teams. I honestly think St. Joe's is as good as a lot of those BCS teams. I think they're as talented. I mean, Galloway, Halil, the big kid in this kid, Brembry, and then Chris Wilson's improved much, and their bench is, you know, coming along. 
I felt like they were I felt like they were playing an SEC ACC type of team. I mean, honestly, that's why I thought preseason wise, if they put it all together, that's like a high major team. So, and then home opener, we're supposedly you know ranked or whatever it is. So um, I think they have a little they had a little extra tonight. They played well. They they for a while they beat us to loose balls and came up with some extra possessions and rebounds. And so that team was as good as. You know the front-loaded schedule that we played. I, I think they're a really good team, and, and definitely, definitely a postseason team. Um, whether it's NCA, NIT, that you know, if they win enough games, obviously that, that determines where they go. But they definitely could win our um, conference and win the tournament in the Barclays, I think.